So Somali piracy has affected maritime shipping. It has affected many different states. The global cost of maritime shipping has been estimated to about 10 to 15 billion dollars per year, and many different nations have been affected because their nationals have been held hostage for many months. Piracy is essentially a crime of opportunity. Somalia is a failed state, has been a failed state since 1991, and pirates are basically able to operate with total impunity in the coastal regions of Somalia. It's a very lucrative business. An average Somali person makes about $600 per year. An average pirate attack can yield an individual pirate thousands of dollars. So it's essentially really a crime of opportunity. So piracy has affected the international community. Maritime shi shipping have, uh, has suffered. Um, the global cost to the um, uh, maritime shipping has been in the billions of dollars per year. Um, maritime insurance rates have gone up drastically from hundreds of dollars to literally tens of thousands of dollars. And the other problem, obviously, is that every big maritime shipping company now faces the risk that their crew members are going to be hijacked and potentially harmed by the Somali pirates. So children in this case have been the pirates as well as the victims. Many pirates are under the age of 18. Many pirates claim to be under the age of 18, but certainly some of them are. Some of them have been as young as 11 or 12. Why is that the case? Well, because in Somalia, there, have, there has been no central government, no schools, no educational opportunities, and, it, and so it's very easy for the pirate um, or poor piracy organizers to recruit young children and to promise them uh, returns of thousands of dollars. And so because they have no other options, children have been relatively easy to recruit into uh, becoming pirates. So in December of 2011, I traveled to the Seychelles, and in the Seychelles they have been prosecuting Somali pirates in their national courts. There I had the opportunity to meet with the local prosecutors and judges and to consult with them about the best strategies for having successful national prosecutions of Somali pirates. And also in September of this year, 2012, I attended the United Nations Contact Group on Piracy meeting in Copenhagen, Denmark, where I uh, had the opportunity to give a presentation on the issue of the treatment of juvenile pirates, what to do when a nation detains a 12-year-old or 13-year-old pirate, how to treat them, whether to treat them as an ordinary criminal or whether a state has the, ob the, the obligation to somehow provide educational training opportunities or to repatriate the children back to um, Somalia. There are many challenges in having a successful national prosecution. The biggest challenge is that the evidence that the prosecutor has to collect is far, far away. The pirate attack takes place in the middle of the Indian Ocean or somewhere else. Um, the crew members are from many different nations. By the time a successful prosecution is occurring, those crew members may be deployed, sent somewhere else. So you as the prosecutor have to find a way to bring them back to the courtroom. You have to have them testify. For example, in Kenya now they're using video link testimony to take care of, of that hurdle. And then the other problem is that in many instances, countries are just unwilling to use their resources, their courtrooms, to have true universal jurisdiction type prosecutions. The na many nations feel like if they haven't been harmed by a single pirate attack, that they just don't want to invest the resources into prosecuting the pirates. And so it's just a question of finding those nations that are willing and able to prosecute. So far, three nations have been identified, and that's the Seychelles, Kenya, and Mauritius. So in order to deter piracy, one thing is that uh, many ships these days have begun to employ private security contractors on board who are now armed, and so that certainly had been a, has been a big deterrence. There are Navy patrols from the EU, from the US, from major maritime nations that routinely patrol the Gulf of Aden and other areas of the Indian Ocean. That has been a big uh, deterrent effect. And then ultimately, we have to ensure that there are always courtrooms available to prosecute pirates so that when pirates are detained by a capturing nation, that capturing nation has options as to where to transfer the pirates for prosecution. We should never catch and release pirates. That just creates the wrong, the completely the wrong incentive. In the United States now, we have had several successful piracy prosecutions. There were um, there was one course, one case in New York in the um, Southern District of New York, and then two cases in Virginia where where pirates have been successfully prosecuted under U.S. law. And that's a good example for all the other nations out there to know that pirates can be successfully prosecuted in national courts.